Welcome to the Real Life Discipleship Podcast, where the conversation about discipleship is always real for real people in real life. Hello again, I'm Lance Wigton. I'm the Communications Director here at Real Life Ministries, and today we have a special treat on a topic that uh, I know I'm interested in, and I think a lot of you out there uh, with technology changing as quickly uh, as, as it is, uh, are curious about, and we have a couple of uh, big time hitters uh, to answer these questions. Uh, let me uh, introduce Chris and Sarah Short to you. Chris is our uh, one of our executive pastors here at Real Life Ministries, and he has been over youth and family for how long? Uh, recently, five years. I've been over that area, but I've been in kids ministry for twelve years. So, so uh, we know all about. Th- uh, know all about the youth and um, the changing needs. And we also, as a special bonus, have his better half, Sarah Short. Mm-hmm. And Sarah is also on staff here at, oh, in women's ministry. But together, we're going to be talking about uh, keeping your child safe online. And uh, guys, this, I mean, when my girls were your girls' age, we had dial-up. And we, no one had smartphones. High speed dial-up. <laughs> yes. And as you know, dial-up was very difficult to do anything, uh, much less get in trouble. But uh, now with uh, all the different devices that kids have mm-hmm. and uh, their ability to seamlessly interact with those uh, pieces without it's seemingly to be instructed, they just naturally, seems like they come out of the womb doing it. Mm-hmm. Uh, there seems like there's a lot of danger. So um, what is the typical age a child in uh, your studies have uh, they start interacting online well first thanks for reminding me how old you are that really helps just for you know our relationship <laughs> just dinosaur age it's true uh, yeah we're, we're a younger family uh, me and Sarah are both 34 35 years old and um, our kids are our oldest is in middle school our youngest are an elementary of four daughters and kind of range from almost 13 to eight eight, eight. Yep. yep so we're right in the middle of kind of the you know, the generational shift that we've seen, which is really the shift I think we, we're all experiencing from um, us adults being, um, you know, digital immigrants mm-hmm. to truly digital natives. I mean, every kid that's born in the last 10, 15 years don't know anything different than life with technology. Mm-hmm. So uh, it's not surprising, you know, the average age of exposure to, to the internet itself is three years old, but I think even that study is uh, kind of bloated because reality is kids are on iPads from one and two years old mm-hmm. um, and they're interacting with almost every app. It has a, access to the internet and relies on, you know, the internet at some point, YouTube kids. I mean, there's just, they're, they're right off the bat from the womb, um, you know, connected somehow. And that's just, it is a kind of a new reality. Well, yeah, and uh, not to make myself sound more like a di- dinosaur, but you know, when I was when I was growing up, you know, we talked about television, and you know how much oh boy, you know how much do you let your kids watch TV, and uh, but that was ridiculous because there was only uh, you know three four channels out there, and and most of it was not geared towards uh, kids, but apps are geared to the individual. It seems like regardless of the age. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I could see that being a, uh, a big problem. So what are, but what are some of the dangers for, uh, kids, uh, who have unmonitored online access? Yeah. I think that when it's unmonitored, we are giving our kids, we're in letting them enter into a world that's really unsafe when we're giving them access, uh, uh, just to random people that they're not going to know. That's mm-hmm. it's almost like a benefit and a curse of technology that we get to interact with so many people and we from all over the world. But at the same time, there are scary people out there and we're not protect. We have to be protecting them. Mm-hmm. And if we're not monitoring that, then they're unprotected. And then also we're also, we're giving them information that they might not be prepared for. Uh, even on YouTube kids and things like that, there's different, um, commercials or ads that they might see. And so we have to be monitoring that because they have to be what they're seeing has to be age appropriate. Cause we don't want to, ha- we don't want them to grow up any faster than they already mm, are in our, totally. in our world. So, but how, how do you, how do you do to that? Because, you know, uh, like I made the reference to television uh, now with uh, smartphones and I mean, the, the access to um, the internet and the access to the outside world uh, 
the literal world mm -hmm. is uh, almost instantaneous and there's so many different portals to do that. So how do you uh, how do you realistically keep your kids from having that kind of exposure that you're concerned about? Well, some of the stuff, you know, we, we taught a class uh, last fall that really kind of dove into some of these pieces. We called it tech wise parenting because it really is a new generation. We need to learn to be wise within as a parent. And, mm -hmm. and that is reality that our kids are going to experience online and all of its facets. Um, that's just reality. That's how they're going to interact at school. Mm -hmm. um, the devices, every device that you have today, um, almost every device that you have today has access to the Internet. So uh, we have to be realistic that that is the truth, but I think that the value of us learning as parents, well, what do we do to disciple them in this way? Mm -hmm. How do we coach them just like we coach them in so many other things, not treat it as an enemy, but treat it as a tool. And I've used this analogy before, but if you think about a tool, mm -hmm. um, use an analogy of like a drill. You know, if, if I have a three-year-old that is exposed to the internet, if I give my, my uh, three-year-old a drill with a drill bit, at three years old, I'm probably not the wisest parent in how I'm parenting them. Uh, you know, th they're not ready for it. They don't know how to use it. It's dangerous, but it's just a tool, right? Mm -hmm. A tool um, in itself is not a danger. But if we don't teach them how to use it well, they're going to be left to cause <laughs> a lot of bad things. Mm -hmm. And so we, we look at technology in the same way. How do I how do I train them in how to use something just little by little? Um, so that as they grow up, this is an area that they can be competent in. They have tools and skills um, that we didn't have. That's honestly, if you look at it, you watch adults today that are so zoned to their phones, they weren't taught, mm -hmm. um, and we're all guilty, you know, weren't taught how to manage time effectively. And so when we're given a device that has a portal to everything, when we started having dial up that took forever to get a piece of information and mm -hmm. now we can get it in 0.1 seconds we do have to learn ourselves how to manage that, how to manage this tool that we have. Um, so it, it is reality, but we have to learn how to teach on that. Mm -hmm. Well, now you, you brought up a, and this is almost a, a different topic, but, and, but I think it, when we're talking about discipleship, uh, which is the context of this podcast, it, it does seem like uh, relationships mm -hmm. are breaking because parents, grandparents, and kids now are no longer interacting like um, the Waltons used to around mm -hmm. the around the dinner table, and uh, the nuclear family's uh, habits are are changing. Uh, there are not only is there dangers online, but wouldn't wouldn't you say there's also dangers uh, relationally to the family structure because of how much time could be done uh, online. Yeah, definitely. There's there's just tons of dangers because then we're not connecting mm -hmm. like one on one, face to face, those kinds of things. And so there are different practices when you're thinking about monitoring your kids or like making sure they only have a certain amount of technology or a certain amount of access on purpose. So putting in some safeguards for your family and what that's going to look best on. Um, whether that's time limits for how much screen time they're going to have or where the iPad iPads, iPods, phones are going to go at night, mm -hmm. like making sure that those things are specific and strategic um, right up front for your family. Even I think before you have kids, what is technology going to look like for your family? No matter if you have high schoolers or like infants have mm -hmm. a plan and a structure. What do I want my family's technology life to look like? And I always think too, I, when I'm talking to especially other moms is you don't want technology to rule you, but you mm -hmm. also need to know technology. Mm -hmm. We are no longer living in a society where technology doesn't exist, where the internet doesn't exist. So for me, I have a middle schooler. She'll be in seventh grade this year. Like not knowing the apps that are out there is, is not acceptable anymore. Mm -hmm. I've got to research them. I've got to know them. I've got to understand them. So that way, when we discuss what app she gets to have, I actually have a firm foundation of the decision of yes or no for her. And then I get to hold her kind of accountable in that in that way with however she's going to use it specifically. So, so are there any, uh, like, do you have sites that you go to, to find out about the, it seems like these apps, uh, you know, thousands to come out new apps a day. Uh, do you have a, a place where you guys trust, uh, that are, that keeps kind of fairly current with some of this information so you can stay current? Yeah. I think there's some great tools that people have at their disposal. They don't even know, honestly. Um, you think about, um, and one of the best practices, I guess this is really kind of our family uh, value. We're, we're kind of an Apple family. And so all of our devices are that. I'm not against Android or Windows, but that's just the world we live in. And one of the things we talk about is, um, you know, we, we actually like Apple because all of our products are in that 
in that realm. And so we know exactly the tools. We know the apps from our TV to mm -hmm. our tablets, to our phones. Mm -hmm. um, and again, you know, there's, there's even some better other devices out there for different categories, but because we use the same operating system for all of our devices, we kind of know, well, what are we going to screen? And so just give you a, kind of an uh, example for our oldest daughter, because she's now diving into now uh, the teenage years. Yeah. Um, you know, we're looking at specifically if she asks for an app, we're, the first thing we're going to go to is the app store. And we're going to find out what's it rated for, mm -hmm. what is available. Even within the app store, there's actually a pretty good description that will tell you what is this app capable of. And a lot of parents will gloss right over that. They'll go straight to, oh yeah, that's great. I trust you. And again, don't hear us say we don't trust our kids, but we know there's things that are put in place at the right age and timing for a reason. Mm -hmm. So we're going to first look there. Um, if we don't know, and there's some question, there are some great websites that you know we've used and I think that are just a great tool um, for families. Um, first, first off, even for, your, for iOS, um, knowing how to utilize screen time, how, how to utilize the capabilities that are built into the settings will tell you um, monitoring your kids, you know, being able to see how much time they're spending on what apps uh, that gives you a real time. If you're an Android person, there's a family link, it's called very similar, kind of helps you monitor those pieces. And for Windows, they have something called Kids Corner. And so all of those different, you know, operating systems have those capabilities to monitor it. But even within that, obviously the the specifics of what's what's within there. Um, you, you can look at some great websites. Focus on the Family has one called PluggedIn.com. Mm -hmm. um, that's a great tool because it, it's a kind of from a Christian perspective. You can look and go, what is this game, app, movie? What does it offer? And so you can kind of you can drill down into those. Um, and there's other you know there's other great tools as well. Um, if you just kind of even on the internet, just search what does this app offer, and you can find information. But like Sarah said, you do have to do the work that really didn't have to do in the past because it was such a limited selection. Mm -hmm. You would have to go to the store to buy a CD to download something. Well, now every game system, every console is is connected to the internet. That's how you download your games. Mm -hmm. Access parents don't realize on gaming systems is it's so interactive today. You mm -hmm. have to be aware. You have to do the work on those and really know your devices. So uh, two, two things though I heard is... Um, you gave the analogy of your junior hire wanting to download an app and you go to the app store first. So uh, you are limiting um, uh, you are limiting how they are accessing accessing apps. Uh, and that's by financially or could, or could they download a free app without talking to you about it? No. So we have settings on all of our um, devices uh, for the for our girls. Mm -hmm. um, so it's an age limit. So my daughter, she'll be 13 soon, but right now she can't, she cannot download any app. She can't even see any app that's 12, uh, 13 years and older. Oh, okay. So a 12, but if she finds an app she likes, she actually has to then request it. It sends a message to my phone and I have to uh, put in a password oh, to that's her phone fantastic. and that's how it downloads. Um, we also have it set up that uh, once an app is downloaded, she actually can't delete it without our permission. Um, so it's kind of just a safeguard and an, ac an accountability for her. And it, that's on all of our girls' uh, different devices mm -hmm. or on it. Maybe in a we have a family iPad. It's on that iPad as well. And it's again, it's kind of just setting them up for that success of accountability. Um, and then even more so, it's just having the conversation. I think of that discipleship piece is so huge. And so sometimes <clears throat> they'll get on kids tube. I cannot control what every single person says. Right. And so it's this ongoing conversation that we have regularly. What, what are you hearing? What are you watching? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like, you know what you should be listening to, what you shouldn't be listening to. And so if something does come up, like come and get me so we can talk about it and mm -hmm. trying to have that open conversation, not that they're going to get in trouble, but that they're learning to put safeguards around themselves of what are you putting into your head? What are you listening to? What are mm -hmm. you seeing? And already trying to, launch them into success, even into adulthood. Cause even mm -hmm. as adults, we sometimes are like, what am I watching? This shouldn't be, this shouldn't be what I'm listening to. This isn't godly or healthy for my life. And so I think taking that time to teach them those practices as well. Mm -hmm. so. I think it's really good. And uh, it's kind of the advantage on a, uh, buying a product level is you guys have all the same brand. So yes. therefore their, uh, interconnectivity is higher. The second thing that you brought up, which I'd like to get into, which is more the relational component. Mm -hmm. So during the day, there are times that they can be online, but there are times that they can't be online is what I'm gathering from what you guys say. 
Yeah. So, um, you know, that's kind of moving into the next piece, which is, you know, once you kind of know, uh, have a good understanding of the devices and the operating systems and the settings that, that you're using as a family, now it kind of comes down to what are the practices that you're going to put in place? Mm-hmm. What are the, what are the wise practices mm-hmm. that, you know, help you set the right kind of guardrails and, you know, just the obvious things. And some of these things are just common sense. And I'm sure many of you do these, um, but we've just had to be very clear about them. We want to set a, a strong tone in the beginning so that as they grow up, we can begin to slowly loosen that. Um, so yeah, time limits, obviously that's a huge one, you know, just starting with, you know, how much time do we give? Um, our, all of our devices lock down after an hour. And so um, certainly they're not just grabbing their device whenever they want, you know, mm-hmm. they're going to they're ask, can we have some screen time? Um, and so, you know, typically on a day, it's 30, 45 minutes, you know, trying to help them to learn what it looks like to have some rest time to be able to use those devices. And then kind of looking ahead, we're, we're already planning now for kind of moving into the social networking apps. Um, none of our kids have that yet. So we're not experts on this by any means, but we've heard some great speakers on that topic. And I think the, the most obvious protections there are to go, okay, have friend limits. Um, you know, uh, one of the uh, officers from the Meridian School District we follow really closely is Officer Gomez. Mm-hmm. He's got a great Facebook page and he, he recommends 200 friends is your absolute limit for all social media accounts. Um, you know, beyond that, you really can't know personally people. And then the obvious, like you're not going to be friends with someone that you don't know face to face. And Mm -hmm. so those are some things that we're already kind of prepping and talking about. Um, we haven't landed on an exact age yet for social media for our kids, but, um, you know, uh, the, the law by the way is 13 years old is, um, for all social networks to be able to download that. We're probably going to be a few years after that, um, just for our family and our kind of value system. And then other limits, just things that, that we've put in place, you know, when you're online, we're not closing doors, mm-hmm. uh, we're sharing passwords, you know, there's no secret passwords to anything that you have. Um, and we also try and just teach them to take a, take a Sabbath, take a day. Mm-hmm. And this isn't every week, but every few weeks we go, we're going to take a day off of, of device use and, and really kind of just, just stop, you know, and, and learn that we don't have to be connected and summertime is, you know, kind of the season we're in right now and going, you know, there's friends in our neighborhood we're going to play with mm-hmm. over connecting digitally. Mm-hmm. So that's just a couple thoughts. Yeah, I th- I, uh, I think that is a great idea. And, and uh, the way, I, you you know, I don't want to give parents and grandparents a uh, an out, but um, I, I don't remember any time in, in uh, you know, recent history where due to technology has changed it Mm -hmm. has changed the way that we live so rapidly. And, um, you know, I, I always think about, uh, the story about grand, you know, grandma teaching, uh, mom, how to make meatloaf and, and, Mm -hmm. you know, and it's, this is the, how you do it. And it's like, that isn't even how knowledge is, is transferred Mm -hmm. anymore. Uh, you know, I can't figure out why my taillight is broken. I go on YouTube and I'm able to fix it (laughs) within, within minutes. And so, uh, I think having this conversation and thinking, Mm -hmm. um, about protecting your kids before you're on the backside of, Oh, I wish we knew, Mm -hmm. uh, I think is a, is a valuable thing to look at. Yeah, I agree. Totally. I think it's too, just, it's, I think what Chris was saying, creating those healthy patterns Mm -hmm. of using technology appropriately. I love, I, I'm not a huge baker naturally. And mm-hmm. so we actually do use a lot of YouTube. My daughters love to cook and I'm not, I don't know necessarily how to do it great. So we pull up YouTube quite a bit. We're using it to our advantage, but at the same time, they can't just open up YouTube right. whenever on their own, but it's just having, again, those clear standards up front. Um, we do different things of, especially setting the precedent now. So they eat, uh, our two middle daughters have iPods. When our girls turn nine, we give them iPods to start kind of just practicing technology mm-hmm. a little bit. Um, and so they have about six people that they can text, um, off the internet. And so that's grandpa and grandma, aunts and uncles. And mm-hmm. so we get into a healthy habit of just checking text messages. It's not uncommon. They know that mom or dad grabs their phone, reads what's going on. So with their there are no secret passwords. There are really no secret conversations. We are a family and we're mm-hmm. open. And the same way that they see Chris and I be open and honest with what's going on with our technology as well. Mm-hmm. It's not a secret. That's why I think sometimes with this technology, we it's a secretive mm-hmm. thing and it creates that division within families or it creates that division of not passing down because mm-hmm. the discipleship is so, that discipleship piece is so key. It still has to exist with technology or we're just a bunch of robots with phones in our hands. Right. I, but I do think that the the danger is unique because the mm-hmm. apps themselves yep. uh, are programmed to the uh, the person themselves. So yep. 
you know, just like a, uh, on when we're streaming, uh, there are shows that my wife watches mm-hmm. on Netflix that I don't watch exactly. and, and vice versa. Mm-hmm. And uh, like she watches British Baking Show, which I think I would rather go to the library. <laughs> but she loves that show. Yeah. But but so, but the, and the same goes for apps. So yep. it's like understand the secrecy thing. But it is the technology itself. Mm-hmm. Streaming itself is is targeted to the individual, not uh, we're going to do this as a group thing. No, nope, it's not. Yeah, it's definitely targeted at the individual. So you have to know what is my child interested in. So if your child's interested in cooking robotics then start, I would start researching online mm-hmm. yourself, those apps. What are the safe apps? If your child loves drawing and you want to download an app for them to mm-hmm. help with that, because again, you're going to use technology to its fullest, but still with protecting right. them, then learn the apps that are safe for them to do. Okay. That was a really good point. And this is uh, an important topic and I appreciate you guys talking about it. Uh, do you, you have any last thoughts on the topic of keeping your kids safe online? Yeah, I think just for us as a family, you know, we we talk about operating systems a lot. And so for us, we kind of have a a family operating system, if you want to call it that, mm-hmm. which is going, what are the rhythms in our day and how how does technology fit into that, but not lead that and and take over our lives? Mm. So if you think about, you know, what happens in your day, you know, you, you wake up in the morning. So for us, we go, we wake up before our devices do, you know, they, they are secondary. Um, we are awake. And when we're ready to access them, they can be accessed. And that just kind of um, really hits a key piece for us as a family is we, we do what's called a phone zone. Uh, really, it's just a landing place that all of our devices sleep at night, you know, and that's where they're going to be throughout the day if we're not using them. And they charge in there and that's just where they live. Um, they don't have to live in our pockets. They don't have to live by our nightstands, you know, for parents that, you know, complain that their student has to be woken up by an alarm clock. There's these crazy things they sell at Walmart still called alarm clocks. Oh, and I've they, heard of yeah, those. Yeah. And they still work today. <laughs> And so that's a piece of it. You think about your day and you go, well, what does mealtime look like? You know, no devices at the table. You know, we're not going to be texting, answering um, for our kids. That's where they're going to be. And for us as adults, um, our devices don't join us to the meal table. When we're driving, a drive time for us is conversation time. You know, we want to want to use that time wisely. There's only so much of it in our lives as we're raising kids. And we want to we want to intentionally talk about things that matter. And not just be busy on our devices. That's there's exceptions for long road trips, but for the most part, drive time is conversation time, um, and really for bedtime. Same thing we talked about when you wake up. Our phones go to bed before we do, and we're gonna we're gonna put them in their place, and they're gonna live there. Uh, they don't need to live by us or with us all the time. They are not a part of us. Um, they are a tool for us. Sure. All right. Well, thanks a lot, guys, for coming in and talking about this subject. And uh, I sure encourage uh, anybody that's li- out there listening today. Uh, concerned about discipleship to think about how that is uh, impacting their homes and how they use technology. Thank you for joining us on the Real Life Discipleship Podcast, where we want you to remember discipleship is simple. It's just not easy.